How's it going guys? Today I'm going to look at how to overclock your RTX 3080 and make sure that overclock is actually stable in games. Because what a lot of people do is they tend to crank up all the uh, sliders and they find that it might be uh, stable enough to get a good 3D Mark score, but not so much a good um, uh, stable in actual games when you're actually playing the games, it just crashes. So um, I've done a bit of overclocking on my RTX 3080 by Aorus, so we're going to have a quick look at that and uh, show you what the best uh, settings are. Okay guys, so now before you actually uh, start doing your overclocking, you, what you want to do is find out your your baseline score, so that's your stock clocks that your actual card has got already. Now the best way to do that is actually make sure that you turn off all the background applications in your actual uh, PC. So, you know, just close stuff like what we've got here, stuff that you don't need. So I've got, at the moment I've got a wallpaper engine running, close that, close my Corsair IQ RGB control, we don't need any of that. Uh, close the motherboard, RGB, you don't need all that rubbish, close this, uh, my unified remote, close my VPN. You want to just put put it down to its bare bones and then you always get your best scores and you actually your best FPS because there's less where background applications are running. Um, then you want to go to power options, um, so choose a power plan, make sure that Windows is running the high performance setting because that uh, doesn't... Um, uh, underclock the CPU or anything like that to save energy. So make sure it's running on high performance. And then what you want to do is click on NVIDIA control panel, open up that. Here it is. Okay. And then you want to go down to power management mode and make sure that's set to prefer maximum performance. And again, that does the same thing as the uh, Windows version. Um, but for your graphics card, it makes sure everything's running at 100% in your 3D applications and it's favoring maximum performance um, over the, uh, uh, but, you know, energy saving and all that kind of stuff, which we don't really care about because we've got an RTX 3080 and we want to smash it up all the way at what needs to go. So once you've done that, you should be good to go to get your baseline scores. Now, uh, you need to open up Steam. Okay, so in Steam, you want to launch 3D Mark and make sure you launch it in the 64 bit mode. Now, once you've got 3D Mark open up, it'd be a good idea to download your uh, overclocking software. So, there's two software you need to download, and that's uh, MSI Afterburner, which is what I mean, you can use any program you want EVGA Precision, MSI Afterburner, AORUS Engine, whichever one you want. But MSI Afterburner, which looks like this. Um, <clears throat> looks uh, works really well with Reaver Tuning Statistics and it, that will give you some on-screen display where it tells you your current megahertz and temperature and stuff like that while the applications are running. So it's good information to have at hand. Now the something to bear in mind is depending on which graphics card version of the 38 you got, you will already have some stock clocks on there. So mine is the Aorus uh, Master by Gigabyte which has already got an boost clock of 1845 megahertz okay now the stock reference uh gpu boost clock of the 3080 is 1710 so this is clocked obviously higher than that so depending on what your card is you know your your boost clock would be different at the moment mine's 1845 because that's what it comes from out of the factory and we're going to be working with that today okay so uh let's uh, launch um Port Royal, and let's see what we get on our stock clocks. And I'm just going to run it in uh, custom run on windowed mode just to give you an idea. Um, I'm going to load this up. Okay, so it's running Port Royal now. So as you can see, the uh, megahertz is up here. This is the Reaver Tuning Statistics server, which is giving me this information. So the boost clock was 1845. Now, obviously, you can see that the, uh, the, the clock is actually going higher than that at different times, sometimes over 2 gigahertz. And basically, um, every RTX card has got um, GPU boost um, enabled, NVIDIA GPU boost, whatever it's called. And basically what that means is if the card is cold enough, it will already keep boosting itself. It's auto overclocking. So it's already going to do it itself anyway. But whatever you set in the uh, overclocking software, it'll surpass that and make it go higher. So basically that's what that does there. So at the minute, it's going past the 1845 stock clocks and it's going up to 1965 plus whatever. 
Now, uh, you know, my scores are going to be a little bit lower than what it normally should be. That's because I'm obviously recording myself doing the video. But this is just to give you an idea of what the stock clocks on this card is like. Okay, guys, so now we've finished the Port Royal run on our stock clocks straight from the box. Um, this is what we've got. So we've got 11, 5, 1, 8. So I've just punched it here into this uh, notepad here so we can keep a record of what exactly our scores was so we get an idea of before and after. So 11518 is our best Port Royal score on stock clocks. Now what uh, I'm going to do as well is run Assassin's Creed Odyssey as well and take the FPS benchmark from there and that gives you a real game kind of benchmark because sometimes what you find is if it's stable in 3D mark it's not always stable in games and that's where obviously it matters because if it crashes in games and doesn't matter how high your 3D mark score is even if you did complete a full run um, it's not stable so we're going to just open up uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey and um, we're going to test the uh, game performance there okay so here I am in Assassin's Creed Odyssey now I'm going to just show you my settings here now obviously I've got a 4K monitor so I'm running everything at 4K um, 60 Hertz there uh, as the native refresh rate V-Sync you want to turn that off for the purpose of a benchmark and <clears throat> everything else in terms of graphics um, let me just save these you can turn to ultra high uh, adaptive quality keep that off anti-aliasing uh, 4K so you don't need anything more than high shadows ultra everything else is just maxed out you've got full you know, ultra, ultra, very high, all the rest of it. Okay, so we're just gonna go into here, and you basically gotta click benchmark and then run benchmark, and we'll see what FPS we're getting on our stock clocks. So the good thing about Assassin's Creed Odyssey's overclocking tool, it does actually tell you the FPS there in the bottom right hand corner while you're actually uh, doing the benchmark, and it tells you, you know, real time exactly what FPS you're getting in a given scene. In the top left, we've still got our, um, uh, Reva Tunis Assistic server there and um, giving us some in-depth information we were running over two gigahertz there for quite a long time and um, because the graphics card doesn't feel like it's getting hot and of course we'll get the final FPS uh, benchmark at the end and obviously bear in mind that I am actually recording this so it's going to be a bit lower than what you actually get when you're not recording and screen capturing at the same time okay everyone so the uh, runs had fi finished its uh, uh, run on the benchmark and as you can see on our stock clocks with everything maxed out at 4k ultra um, we're running 62 fps on average with a 27 minimum and a 161 maximum there so uh, it's pretty good anyway on, uh, obviously uh, with a 3080 uh, 4k um, but obviously we're going to see if we can better that today and Remember to save the results. So 62 FPS average. I'm just going to Alt F4 out of here. Go in our notepad. So I'm going to put Creed stock, and we've got 62 FPS average. Okay. So now that we've uh, locked that in, we can go back to and do the actual fun stuff. So what we're going to do is in MSI Afterburner, this is the program that we're going to use. You can obviously use your anything else you want, EVGA position or ARS engine, whatever you want to do. Okay. So first thing you want to do is that I would say it's a good idea to save the default clock so you can flip between them. So make a profile there, number one, and then um, click uh, save there. Okay. So that's saved to number one. Then create another one put it number two and this is the one we're going to be editing today okay so let's have a look what we need to do here you've got to make sure for the first thing is make sure your um, temperature limit slider is all the way to the end and also your power limit slider is all the way to the end as well so keep them now th them two you can link and unlink there but uh, yeah just make sure they're all maxed out so they're like kind of Safety limits, you know, in case it's getting too hot, it'll cut itself out, the, the card or whatever, uh, and it'll start to throttle to dial it back to stop damage. But you don't really need to worry about that for um, these days. They don't kind of crash out. You're not going to brick it or anything like that. But don't hold me accountable if it does. Uh, and here's your uh, megahertz of your core clock. So this is the thing you want to be changing. 
Now what you need to be aware of is obviously your boost clock is already set by default or depending on what card you got. So in my case it's 1845, you know. So whatever additional you put on your core clock is going to be on top of whatever your boost clock is. And then you've got GPU boost pushing it even further. So this is where you can get, you know, maybe 2.2045 uh, megahertz uh, or 2.1 uh, me uh, gigahertz clocks, you know, by doing this. Okay. So um, what I would normally recommend is start with like a 50, a plus 50 or a plus 60 and just increase it in 10 megahertz increments uh, and then do like a run. Okay, so you want to do your core clock first before you even touch your memory clock. Leave memory clock for, for now. Fan speed, leave that on auto because realistically, you're not going to be running your fan speed at 100% all the time. So leave your fan speed at auto and just put your core clock at 50 megahertz for now and then do a Port Royal run. Okay, that's the quickest way of just doing a quick test. Do a Port Royal run 50 megahertz. If it's stable, then go back into Assassin's Creed and see if that's stable. Uh, and and so on and so forth. If it is stable, then yeah, you've probably got a pretty sorted uh, uh, overclock there. And to bulletproof it, you can always go into like Assassin's Creed and actually play around for about 20 minutes. If it's if it doesn't crash, you should be all right. And then if you want to go higher, just come back to your desktop, put another 10 megahertz on the core clock, so you can go from 50 to 60. That's it. Uh, leave everything else the same. And then go back, do your port roll run, go back, do your Creed benchmark. And then if that's stable, try again. And so on and so forth. You just want to keep increasing this by 10 megahertz until the game crashes, basically. That's all you need to do. Okay. Now, once you've done that, then you can start messing around with the memory clock. Now, something you've got to uh, uh, know about memory clock is you can smash it all the way up, you know, proper high. You know, and you might find that the game never crashes. But you got lower FPS. That's because the, the the memory just doesn't work at that kind of speed on, on your particular chip. So it's so what I would suggest is start with a memory clock of about 500, which is what most cars can do comfortably anyway. Before you start losing FPS and you get a memory leak, start with 500. Say your core clock, you managed to get it stable. At, I don't know, uh, 90 or something like that, and then you want to start messing with around your memory clock then. So if you've got plus 500 and then go back into Port Royal, see if your score's improved, go back to Assassin's Creed, you might find the memory clock doesn't really give you huge amounts of FPS gains, maybe like one or two, you know, something like that. But you might find it gives you a much more higher score in the 3D mark. So yeah, just go back into 3D mark, see if it goes up. If it does, then happy days. Go into Assassin's Creed, see if it uh, is okay. If it is, then, you know, leave it at 500 and then put it up by another 100 and then put it up by another 50, etc. Do the same thing with your memory clock. Just start at 500 and start at 50 with your core clock. Now, once you've figured those out, um, you'll eventually have a, uh, you should eventually have a stable overclock, okay? Now, mine um, was actually that I got stable and I actually used Aorus Engine to do it because I've got an Aorus card. So mine I've got stable here, if I can just load it up, where's it gone? Ah, there it is, okay. So here, I've got my max OC clock here. So obviously remember, my card is already overclocked to 1845 megahertz out of the box. So I managed to get a plus 105 on top of that 1845 megahertz to bring it to 1950 on the GPU boost. And the memory clock I got up to plus 750. So I'm going to apply that now, and then um, <coughs> it's uh, it's locked in. Now you can uh, you can set in your program so this actually activates on startup. You just got to make sure that it it's it's set in your settings here. So depending on which one you use, um, you know uh, MSI Afterburner or Aorus Engine, like MSI Afterburner, it's in the settings as well. You know on startup, you just click that button. That's all you need to do. Um, but once it's in there, you should have that there as your uh, <coughs> sorry, your uh, your actual clock. So, so that's what I've got anyway. Which I found obviously I've not just checked Assassin's Creed. I've checked Battlefield. I checked Metro. I checked loads of games. I know that this is 100% stable for me. 
You might find this a different for you in your particular card, but these are my clocks at the minute. And I'm just gonna load up, um, uh, I'm just gonna load up a thingy now. Let's just close that, uh, 3D Mark, and we'll run it again, and we'll compare it to our previous scores. All right, so here we are in th uh, 3D Mark Port Royal. Obviously I'm recording as well, so that's gonna affect the, um, the clock speed. But as you can see here, it's constantly over 2,000 megahertz. We're looking at 2,070, 2,85, 2.1 there, or even higher. So obviously the overclock is working here um, using my Reaver Tuna Statistics server. And we are getting uh, a higher clock there as well. And the GPU temp is sitting at comfortably at the minute around 66, 65 degrees on the AORUS Master. So let's just skip to the end and see what score we get. Okay guys, so now that the run's finished, we can see here we've got a, uh, a score and we break that 12K barrier. So we've got 12,027, so 12,027. So we're just gonna put that in here. So obviously the overclock worked and we're getting in there. So remember guys of my uh, settings that I put in here. So that was a plus 100 and five so that's 1950 on the gpu boost and the memory clock 19 uh plus 750 there so 9752 uh, or 9750 which is a bit of a weird bit of a weird number now obviously we need to make sure it's game stable so go into your create assassin's creed play a bit of that run the benchmark if it's stable in there then you know it's right so we're just going to load up assassin's creed now and run the benchmark there okay guys so here we are in assassin's creed now you can already see in the menu here that we're actually getting over 2.1 but anyway uh, obviously all the uh, settings are exactly the same so i'm just going to run the benchmark and we shall see what kind of fps we get on average in Assassin's Creed. Okay, so here we are with the um, benchmark finish, and as you can see, we're at 68 FPS now average with a 14 minimum and a 147 maximum. So uh, I'm happy with that. We've got a bit more extra frames there. We've got six FPS more than what we had before. So if I just get out of here and have a look here, so we've got 68 FPS average. So yeah, there you go guys, that's pretty much it. So it is a very simple guide on how to do this, you know, if you've never done it before. It's very, very straightforward. Um, you know, it, it's well worth doing because it's, it's, you save yourself a bit of money, you can go for a slower card as long as you've got a good cooler on it, you know, or whatever you get in stock, um, <laughs> if you can ever find stock for the 3080. And just put a cheeky overclock on it, you know, and gave yourself an extra six FPS there. Um, and uh, it's free, <laughs> so why wouldn't you anyway? So I hope this video has helped. Um, if you did like the video and it's helped you out, please put a uh, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Hit the like button as well. Um, and if you've got any questions, please leave a comment in the uh, comments box below. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. Cheers.